Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. And this is our weekly progress update number 24, uh, covering our accomplishments and progress for the week of August 5th, 2013. For those that don't know, we're a highest good of all organization creating the open source blueprints for sustainable and self-replicating teacher communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world. And ultimately what that boils down to is we are a green living and design organization purposed to spread the concept of sustainable and self-sufficient living around the world, either in little bits and pieces as components that can be duplicated or as complete teacher demonstration villages, communities, and cities, uh, which is what one community is the prototype for. And we'll be building seven of these different village models. So without further ado, let's jump into our, our updates. The format of this, these blogs is always the same. I go over a quick overview of everything that we've accomplished for the last week, and then I go back and I re-review everything bullet point by bullet point, discussing some of the details. So let's do that. Uh, this last week, we have finished the large-scale Aquapini planting guidelines, uh, descriptions, cultural considerations, and all the other details for large-scale aquapenia. Everything that's going to be planted in there is now done and up on the website. It's very, very exciting. Uh, that structure will produce over 7,000 pounds of food annually once it's complete. We'll be growing trees in there, a combination of deep water culture as well as media beds and in-ground growing. It is amazing and really the product of hundreds of hours of work to get to the point where we are with that. Um, and then we also did all the food projections on that, so that's how I know I could tell you it'll produce over 7,000 pounds of food. We've done, we finished the food projections for the large-scale Aquapini as well as for Wallapini 3, which is the large-scale production uh, Wallapini design as well. So both of those are up on the website now, and there's also a link to the complete spreadsheets if you want to see all the details behind the scenes that have been done on that. Uh, we also got Wallapini 2 apples are up, which might not sound like a big deal until you take a look at it. It is amazing. I uh, highly recommend checking that out. I'll go into details in a second. Uh, behind the scenes, we've got our hoop houses plan, hoop house uh, plans done for year one on the property. Um, we've got our cost analysis also behind the scenes for the Earthbag Village it is 90% done. So we might be able to get that up in this next week, or it might be another week. We'll see. Uh, we've got Sego Center roof is has been redesigned, and we've got Sego Center living uh, dome floor one walls are complete. And so I'll put a couple screenshots in the uh, companion written blog that goes along with this video blog and as always if you want to see that if you go to uh, the YouTube description for this video and you click down below in that description it will uh, link to the written blog or if you're watching this current just go to the One Community website click on blog up at the top and that will take you to our, our blog and you can see images and stuff for everything that we're talking about. Um, additionally we've got our gray water systems design page is up so Erin Ponty is doing a phenomenal job on putting that together, and so we've got her details of everything that she's designing there up on the website. Oh, and I want to say the Sego Center roof is compliments of Andrew Sedera and Sedera Designs. Uh, he did the roof design for the Sego Center cupola roof that I'm talking about, and so that has been updated. I said I'll put some pictures in there for that. Um, we also did another radio show interview in the last week. Our education program, uh, we're currently working on Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. We're 75% done with the reading of that book and comprehensive note-taking on that book, which will be one of the major foundations for the strategies of being for the education program, the open source education program. And we launched our satellite member and international pioneer options are now updated on the website as well. And I'll talk about those in a minute. And then last but not least, we updated our community contribution page with all the details about how it is that somebody could build a teacher demonstration community village or city and never have to work in a traditional job again in their life and be surrounded by other people that don't have to work traditional jobs any longer also and simultaneously if they're on board with the highest good for all philosophy and want to put in the additional time and energy into it they can really be contributing something amazing to the world and the surrounding community and giving back and uh, contributing something just really, really magical and being a part of the open source creation and highest good of all philosophy, which is the foundation for one community. And so that's our update in a nutshell. And now I'd like to go into details on all that stuff. So um, starting from the top, 
We've got, uh, I said we had the large scale aquapini plants done. It's a product of hundreds of hours of work. Uh, if you go to the website and take a look at it, and you go to our food infrastructure and go to our open source hub, you can see us and I'll add links, of course, into the, um, the blog, the written blog as well. So you can just click on those and see what it is that I'm talking about. You'll see that we planned out every single plant that's been in there. I think it's over 50 different plants that are going to be grown in there. Um, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but diversity of fruit, vegetables, uh, root, root plants and vegetables, as well as medicinal plants all grown within that structure, and it'll produce enough greens to feed a small village. So leafy greens, bok choy, um, also broccoli and cauliflower and all that kind of stuff. It's really uh, quite an amazing structure that we have that we've designed there. Um, and so all those planting details are up there, as, along with the actual planting details, like how the planting guidelines and cultural considerations, all that, and then links to more information, because a lot of these, well, some of these plants in that structure are quite rare, very, very difficult, um, and most people have never even found, heard of them. And so part of the goal with our food infrastructure is to not just provide um, a higher quality of, of food than most people can purchase in the grocery stores, but to provide a diversity of food that most people have never even seen or heard of. And so, uh, and the greatest example of that, if you want a really simple example of that, that people are really familiar with, um, we've got our Wallapini 2 apples are up. And so uh, a couple of blogs ago, I sung the praises of our partner at Century Farm Orchards and how amazing the apple selection that these guys have is to produce and it's really the one of only two orchards that can produce some of the apples that we are offering that will be growing in Wallapini 2 and if you want to see how amazing the apples are we now if you go to our Wallapini 2 uh, page and you look at the planting and harvesting guidelines there we've featured nine of the apples that we think are most most accurately represent the diversity and the broad differences of flavors uh, appearance and uses of apples. Most people don't realize that, you know, now when you go to the grocery store, you see what, maybe four or five different apples, but there are thousands, there's, there's over like 1,200 different types of apples. And um, some of these apples have almost disappeared. They've almost gone extinct and they've been brought back thanks to uh, amazing providers like Century Farm Orchards and others that are out there are keeping these apples alive. And so some of the apples that we'll be growing are the same types of apples that George Washington and Thomas Jefferson were growing in their private orchards and that you can't buy at a grocery store anywhere. They are amazing. And so the point of all of this is, is uh, you know, there's apples that are great for frying, there's apples that are great for cooking, because that used to be really popular, and then there's apples that are just great for eating. There's some apples that are good for storage, some apples that aren't good for storage. And so uh, Wallapini 2 is really dedicated to growing a di of the broadest diversity, as many trees as we possibly can. And so we'll have 50 different apple trees in that structure and so we've got all of those apples are now listed and there's links to details of all the ones that we didn't feature on the center so you can go directly to the Century Farm Orchards and see those and uh, this is amazing you know it's really really beautiful if you see something like that you realize that we really have uh, quite a broader experience of apples that we could be having so that is complete Uh, in addition to that, behind the scenes, we've got our hoop house plans done for year one. So our goal in the first year of establishing one community, excuse me, <coughs> is <coughs> to be able to uh, provide 100% of the food for 30 people. So we'll move on to the property with 50 people, and we're budgeted to easily be able to feed over 100 if we're purchasing all of our food. And so we want to be able to be food self-sufficient for anywhere from 30 to 50 people. So we set our goal at 30 people, and then as we move into year two, we want to be food self-sufficient for anywhere from 50 to 100 people. And so and as we finish year two, we want to be fully food self-sufficient for 100 people, and then we move into it. And the ultimate goal is to develop a food forest on the property, and through a combination of the large-scale aquapini and the other aquapinis, as well as the wallapinis, to be able to grow enough food to ultimately be food self-sufficient for over 600 people. That's the long term, looking in the bigger picture. And so if we can demonstrate that, what we want to show is the whole process 
of converting the property over to that. And so the first step of that is the hoop house plans to make sure that we can first become food self-sufficient for 30 people. Literally going, okay, we're growing enough food that we could live 100% on what we're growing as well as goats, chickens, and rabbits, what we would be able to produce there by putting all that together, that would be sufficient for us to be able to feed 30 people without having to buy anything uh, if we didn't want to. And of course, we'll be buying spices and some of these things, it just makes more sense to purchase. Flour is a great example of something that just makes more sense to pur purchase. Um, but the idea is to demonstrate that if we didn't, if we didn't have uh, the option of a grocery store, that we'd be 100% food self-sufficient. And so behind the scenes, we've got the hoop houses details done, and we'll be putting those up this week on the website. Um, also, I mentioned we got Sego Center roof done thanks to the amazing designs of Andrew Sidera. Um, and we've also got the first floor living dome of the Sego Center Duplicable City Hub, which for those that don't know, click on the link and check it out in the, on the website, or just a quick, quick uh, update or brief description of what that is, is it's a duplicable city center. So it's meant to be a village community center that will replace the kitchens, dining rooms, and recreational spaces in individual homes for anybody that wants to build our village models around that city center. And then that city center will be able to operate in and of itself as an ecotourism destination and a revenue stream for the teacher demonstration eco village model. And I'll talk a little bit more about how all that works with community contribution. So we got that done. I mentioned the gray water system size up thanks to Erin Ponty. I was butchering her last name in the last couple blogs. So I apologize, Erin, for getting that wrong, and now I've got it right. So um, uh, she's a landscape architect that's doing our gray water systems designs. You can see the page now, the open source page is trying to share those designs as they develop. Uh, we did another radio show on the House of Hidalgo show. I'll put up a link to that as well if you want to listen to that radio show. We went into depth on the first two village models and uh, the education program as well and how all the details fit together. It's exciting to do that show because it was a second show with uh, Rick and so I had an opportunity to talk a lot more in depth instead of just going into the overview of what one community is all about which is what most of the shows I do are on is just talking about kind of the same overview, the general concepts and Rick had really dug into our website. I'd already done a show and so I was able to really go in depth into some of the different aspects and so that was really exciting. Um, and I mentioned the edu education program is moving along. Uh, we're, we're taking Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth, which is really about consciousness and the ego, um, and, and we're dissecting that book. We're taking it apart and we're looking for all the different strategies in there that we think would be very valuable to great teachers, communicators, and leaders to implement within an educational system. And so we're making that a foundation of our open source Education for Life program. So that's about 75% done, and so hopefully this next week we're trying to wrap that up, and then we'll go into the process of taking the notes, which now is pages and pages of notes, and turning those into something a little bit more digestible, which ultimately will be one page, and then we'll have a breakout page with the additional open source details that will go along with that, and then we'll continue to evolve that with four agreements and some other things that we're looking at, putting it all together, and so those details are coming along behind the scenes. Um, and then a couple of the biggest things were in this past week uh, where the satellite member option has been fully launched and that satellite member option is for people that don't want to move on to the property or can't meet some of the other requirements as far as like the initial pioneer group there's some pretty strict requirements on that group because we want to really assure our success requirements like no financial debt um, requirements like no pets uh, and so our healthy living policy things like that physical ability. People have to have a certain level of physical ability to be able to join the Pioneer team because of the amount of building that we're going to be doing every day. And so um, there's a limit on how many children we're requesting for the initial Pioneer team of just one child per two parents or in the case of a single parent, one child for a single parent just because we're going to be doing so much building that we want to create an environment that is really conducive to, to delivering and being present for our children as well. And so, you know, that as an example is one of those areas where we just said, hey, you know, for the initial team, we're really looking for one child per per couple or per uh, single parent if it's a single parent type of situation so that we can really um, excel in the child care department and so we can operate our education program as effectively as possible as well. And so anyway, the point of all that stuff is, is we rolled out our satellite member option 
which is for people who'd like to join the one community team and either they don't want to move on to the property or because of something that is one of our requirements they can't move on to the property and so for satellite members they get to participate in one community as full members complete members that have access to our back office they use the ace application that we use for tracking time and coordinating everything that we do behind the scenes uh, they're on our weekly team calls they're on our welcome team calls all these details satellite pioneers get to be a part of it and so we created the option for people that either want to start community somewhere else or can't join us for whatever reason and we've launched all that it's got a much shorter application form um, but it's still looking for those people that really can perform at the elite level of our team and want to be a part of world change with us. And so not only did we roll that out this last week, we also updated our international uh, pioneer option. And the international pioneer option, we didn't think that we had any type of visa option that we could offer. And fortunately we had uh, some uh, couple that did a whole bunch of the visa work for us and it appears that an H3 visa is an option for us, which is a learning, a learning visa. And it's good for up to two years. And so um, we've updated our website saying, hey, if you're somebody who's living out of the country and would like to be a part of one community and the building process with us, it looks like we have an option now for being able to, through our nonprofit organization, being able to be a part of the visa uh, process for somebody who might want to do that. And so that's super exciting because we... We went down the road of, of bringing on several international pioneers in the past, and then we found out that we ran into all kinds of visa issues, and this we hadn't we hadn't discovered this option yet, and so um, it's wonderful because we want as much diversity in the property as possible. Uh, we have a lot of people that contact us from the international community that are interested in our project, and so between the satellite pioneer, or sorry, between the satellite member and between the international pioneer option, we now have a couple different ways that we can um, offer something. And so that's exciting. And then last but not least, uh, we updated our community contribution page. And so, <coughs> excuse me, getting over a bit of a cough. Um, <clears throat> we updated our community contribution page. And the community contribution page is the details of how it is that we will be able to run our, and are running our organization, but how we will be able to run one community as a nonprofit organization of all volunteers that don't have to work traditional jobs. Nobody has to work a traditional job. And so the one community model is designed to become self-sufficient and not self-sufficient in the, in, the, in the manner, although it would be this as well, but our goal, because we have a huge outreach program, is not to become self-sufficient in that we're shutting out the world and saying, hey, we're doing our own thing, but we actually have a complete nonprofit and for-profit uh, business models, two different business models that work together to support our global goals, our global sharing goals, our open source goals, and we're open sourcing both of those business models and both of those entities as well with the idea that we want to demonstrate to people that if they want to create an, an, a teacher demonstration community, village, or city, that they can do that and they would never have to work a traditional job again. Instead, their lifestyle would become their commodity and what they would provide would be an ecotourism destination where people would be able to come and visit them, see everything that they're doing, participate in whatever way works best for the individual or however their model is set up. Ours is being set up so that you can participate completely. And then the money that that would generate would pay for all their expenses as well as their ability to be able to expand. And the idea with all of this is so that people in debt could invest in something like this and they have a way of actually getting out of debt because it's a business. Or people who want to really do something do this as a philanthropic or as a humanitarian effort <clears throat> would be able to do that as well and in the process also be able to sustain themselves long term to create it as a permanent option living option for them where they would never have to work a traditional job again and so our community contribution page uh, goes into all the details on that and <clears throat> what's really exciting about it is that page is really and this idea that people will never have to work a traditional job that they'll have more time to do the things that they want to do that they'll have more time with their friends and their family and and an environment that is really founded on on a culture of personal growth and contribution and collaboration and in our case really world change with one community that idea of creating a lifestyle living that way is really the foundation of our four-phase strategy for global transformation. 
the idea is to demonstrate a better way and to couple that with a lifestyle that most people would consider to be far superior than the traditional model and in doing that create something that becomes self-replicating. And every teacher demonstration village, community, or city that's built, because it's built on sustainable infrastructure, and because it produces more than it takes, is moving our planet in the right direction. And every person that comes and visits that is getting an experience of something that they can duplicate. And then we hand that to them and say, hey, if you really want to do this, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to duplicate the whole thing. And then they're given that opportunity to go and do that. And so um, community contribution is the, is the foundation of that. Our model is built on a 40-hour work week that includes the social architecture, it includes keeping everything running, it includes operating the businesses, it includes building all of our infrastructure and inviting people in and hosting people. All that's built into that 40-hour work week. But because of an efficiency model, you actually have more free time than if you're working a traditional job. Way more free time. And five hours of that 40 hours is part of the social architecture that creates an environment that has constant growth opportunities and classes and yoga and meditation classes and live music, as well as different educational classes, you know, book clubs, nature walks, all that, anything that anybody wants to contribute for that five hours, they can contribute to the social architecture that is the community model, so long as two or three other people want to participate in it initially. And really that number is 15% of the community population wants to participate in it. So anything would work for that, but it's got to be open to the public and it's got to be open to all community members. And so within that, we're going to create, we're building an ecotourism model that will really provide like a club med type of environment for people that are really into sustainability, that are really into personal growth, that are into an enriched living model, a fulfilled living model. And we're teaching people that they can build this too, that you can build this too, that anybody can build this too. And that's our highest good for all philosophy is to say, okay, we'll open source all of these details and make it so that anybody can duplicate them. And in so doing, we want to create a sustainability model that becomes self-replicating. Self-replicating because it provides what people want, which is that fulfilled living model, or if they're people that are really just dedicated world change, it provides that as well. And that's what our organization is all about, is creating these blueprints and building the prototype, which is a lot more work than it'll be to build the next successive versions of this, the other iterations of it, especially if somebody's not focused on the open source creation, all the details that we are. And so the community contribution model fuels all of that. It's, it's how people put in their time. And we're already operating a community contribution model right now as an organization, as we're organizing. Everybody has a specific amount of committed time that they put into forwarding and creating one community every single week. And this is how we're continuing to move forward. And so that's what that page is all about. If you like, check it out, read the page, take a look. It's also got a lot of details of what a day at one community could look like and shows the variety because there's a lot of flexibility built into it, into the model as well. And so um, we're just excited to be able to put that out. So with that, that's our update for the week of August 5th, 2013. Um, as always, thank you for following our project. We appreciate all the amazing emails that we get. Take a look at the links, go to the written blog and take a look at all the links that are related to everything that we're talking about. The level of detail is phenomenal. And um, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you'd like to get weekly updates like this in your email box. If you'd like to see these updates come through weekly, uh, check out our blog if you'd like to see some of the past ones. And um, thank you until next week. Have a good one.